right, welcome back and thank you so much for staying with us here on Morning Live. Now, Ndabo Zulu is a trumpet player from Durban who started playing trumpet at a very tender age. Ndabo has been involved in many music organizations like the South African National Youth Orchestra, uh, KZN Youth uh, Wind Band, amongst others. Winner of the 2016's Norway Yes is Kit. Uh, competition. This young musician is well on his way to making his mark in the local and international music scene. He joins us in our studios in Johannesburg just to talk a little bit about his uh, musical journey and where to from here. Good morning, Saubon and Jani Buti. Thank you so much for joining us here on Morning Live. And you started, um, in fact, your journey in music started at the age of 11. Yeah. Talk to us about that. Oh, well, uh, I started uh, playing music. Uh, at a government school that I was uh, going to, uh, I started playing an instrument called steel drums. It is made out of uh, oil uh, cans. And they cut them and they tune them into different notes. Mm -hmm. So I started playing that at a very uh, early age. In fact, I think I was nine years old when I started so playing So it wasn't even drums. 11, it was at nine? Trumpet was 11. Okay. So, uh, I, and uh, they shifted me to trumpet because they thought that it was so natural for me to start playing that. Not that I chose that or he mm -hmm. chose me. <laughs> there was nothing <laughs> special about yeah. it. Uh, I just made a sound and they thought it was natural for me to play that. But uh, it took a long time because I was pretty tiny and the instrument was pretty yeah, big yeah. for me. But it simply shows music has always been in your veins. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 definitely. Because you, you even went as far as studying music. You're doing your master's I'm now. I'm doing my master's now in Norway. Yeah, yeah. At the uh, Norwegian Music Academy. Yeah. Talk yeah. to us about the topic of a thesis. It's, oh. It sounds so interesting because <laughs> you're actually doing research on that. Mm. And then at a later stage, you'll only be releasing your first album. Yeah, yeah. Um, so my master's uh, at this Norwegian Music Academy, uh, when you apply, you have to have a project. So it's a project-based uh, master's. Uh, for two years and uh, my project is uh, I'm researching since I'm from South Africa mm -hmm. and I live in Norway so I kind of have the bigger picture of both uh, the music scenes in, in, in Norway and in South Africa so uh, it, it is basically based on the approach uh, of musicians in both countries how, how do we perceive music how do we uh, treat the band stand how do we uh, treat each other on stage as as musicians how do we interpret uh, some uh, the whatever but music we play yeah what have you discovered on those issues if you were to compare the two oh wow oh wow it's it's um, uh, if i just become really uh, short and really direct norwegians are uh, perfectionists yeah. south africans go with energy and spirit mm -hmm. and uh, i'm uh, that's uh, the fu fundamental of my masters is to try and blend these things to to make a band that is as spiritual and as energetic as South Africans, but also as clean as Norwegians. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so it's there's still a long way for us here in South Africa. No, 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 no. It's uh, it's uh, it's just a different approach, yeah. and uh, it's just uh, I think it's taste and an opinion. Yeah. Um, that counts uh, in, in this matter, I think. All right. Yeah. But in terms of the reception, um, yeah. a lot of uh, South African musicians complain of the support that they get from fans, that the local music is not necessarily supported. How are things looking in Norway? Well, I think the biggest problem we have in South Africa is it starts with the venues that are actually uh, hosting these jazz concerts. Uh, by making it an elite uh, uh, they, they make it accessible and the audience is like the elite people. Mm. When you show up there, you have to be dressed in a certain way. Yeah. And you know it's not like that. Anyone can, you can come with your whatever. They wear sweaters, woolen sweaters. And even the band that's performing, uh, they also treat the music like that. Mm. But in, uh, in South Africa, Babako, who, who has w went to work and figured go overall, mm. cannot actually just come in whatever this, these fancy places that I think it starts there that, that the, the sooner we take that status yeah. thing on the, on the music and, and on jazz, mm -hmm. I think then it would have an effect on, on our fan base. Or, so it's not necessarily across all the genres, it's just on jazz. I'm not, I, I would never, you I'm would not going to talk yeah. so much about other yeah. genres because uh, I'm a jazz musician, yeah. so I, I would talk so much, I would talk this much about jazz because that's what I've, uh, I've, I've seen, I think. All right, but jazz, is it a genre for young people or is it across the board, is it for older people? In fact, it has always been perceived as a genre for older people, most of here in South Africa. <laughs> <laughs> wow, I don't think jazz is a genre for, for older people. Mm. 
I think jazz is a, is a genre like like hip hop and like uh, quite or like like. So there is no specific target audience no, no, for jazz. No, 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 there isn't. It's just it's music and it's really good music, mm. and uh, it's pretty sad that they made it a genre for old people and a genre that can only be enjoyed on Sundays. Yeah. And that's the culture that we grew up with, mm -hmm. and uh, I think it's going to change. I But how do how do we do away with it? Like you said, we only hear jazz music on our radio stations on Sunday, for example. Yeah. But how how, how do we do away with it? I I, I it's it's a <laughs> it's pretty difficult. it's pretty tough. Yeah, it's pretty tough. Yeah, because that's the culture that's been created. Yeah, it's pretty tough. It's pretty tough. I mean, it's the same thing as uh, airing uh, soapies at a particular time in, in the day mm. it becomes a, a tradition that you know when you eat, eating your dinner it looks in you eat dinner pretty late yeah. at eight o'clock you know you you stuck on your tv screen yeah. watching whatever soapy you're watching and so it's a tradition i think yeah but when and jay what attracted you to jazz music wow i was a classical trumpet player for a really long time mm. and uh so when I uh, did, uh, I was uh, doing a, an exchange uh, program in Norway. It was supposed to be for, for one year as a classical trumpet player. Mm -hmm. But I grew up listening to jazz and I grew up playing with friends. And so when I uh, was at that uh, Folke School, the teacher asked me, why don't you just go and audition at one of the universities? I think you will make it. Mm -hmm. it's, it's pretty difficult to get in because mm -hmm. they take one or two uh, of, the, of, of that kind of instrument. So it, I'm a trumpet player. There would be 30 or 40 trumpet players coming to audition. Mm -hmm. And they would take one that year or two. And I was lucky to be the one that was chosen. And it was just that teacher who saw potential in me. Yeah. But what do you think sets you apart from so many musicians that we have here in South Africa and, of course, abroad? Well, I, I, I don't think there's anything that sets me apart. I think every musician is different. Mm -hmm. Because music, and especially jazz, it has to do with the personality as well. So we don't perceive and we don't ap approach because uh, uh, it's an imp improvisational music. But what music. personality traits are you talking about you're referring to? What is it that you have to have in order to be a, a jazz musician? Wow, I, I, don't, <laughs> I, don't, I think anyone can be a jazz musician, okay. to be honest with you. I think we all are improvisers. Yeah, because I heard you talking about a personality, a yeah. certain personality. Yeah. So I thought maybe there are specifics. No, no, I mean, just for the fact that you, we are, we're different from each other yeah. is, is special enough, I think. Mm, mm, mm. And I think everyone is an improviser. Mm. The fact that we are talking right now in this interview mm. is, is part of that as well. So I think everyone is a jazz musician. And how do you plan to sort of do away with uh, the stereotypes that we know that jazz is for older people, like we were saying? Uh, wh wh what's that special element that you plan to bring along with your music? Well, I, I, I think I, I play music honestly and I write honestly, I mm -hmm. compose honestly. And, uh, and I think people don't have an option but to actually love what you're doing if you're doing it wholeheartedly yeah. and you're doing it on, on I'm not doing it to, to gain a huge fan base I'm just doing what I think mm. is it's the music I write is so sincere I think mm. that you but know. what influences your song what Wh you write okay about? wow okay I have a lot of influences uh, uh, I can just name a few people that actually are playing a big part without them actually b being there physically for me. For an example, there's a, an artist from South Africa called Nduduzo Makatini. Oh. He's, playing a, he's a, oh. one of my mentors and he's actually overlooking my uh, master's uh, program while I'm here in South Africa because I need someone who's going to be inspecting from, from yeah, South Africa. Yeah, from South yeah, Africa. Yeah. And he's the one. Mm. And he's been playing a really big role in my music career in All South right. Africa. But when and where can people see you perform? Oh yeah, uh, <laughs> unfortunately we just did a gig last night at the Orbits, but I'm playing on uh, Friday with and the same the band. And how was the response yesterday in the reception? Wow, wow, it was really overwhelming, yeah. it was really overwhelming. You know when you've been playing a lot, you can actually feel it when you go on stage, uh, the warmth and the love oh, that you're getting from, yeah. from the people. Yeah. And it makes the gig easier and it makes it smoother. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I was really happy with last night. And it's a, uh, a big thanks to everyone who showed up. All right, so uh, where to from here? Uh, I'm playing a gig on Friday. At the chairman in Durban. Okay. Uh, I'm <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm playing a gig again on the 29th uh, at Soweto Theatre with uh, Hebe Toaeli. All right. And uh, there might be another gig on the 30th with Hebe. So uh, there's uh, and people can also follow on social media as well. All right. And uh, what's your Twitter handle? Uh, I don't have Twitter. 
Twitter. <laughs> I, I so tried how do it. they follow you on social media? I mean, or is it just a Facebook Instagram page? on Facebook. Instagram and Facebook. And uh, we ha there's a band page called Zulu. So at Zulu's okay. exit, Munda Bentley Zulu on Facebook. Okay. Ndabo on Instagram. They can follow up on All that. right. We'll leave yeah. it at that. Thank you so much and all the best with your studies and all your performances. Oh, wow. Thank you for the invite. Thank you so much, Sabrina. <laughs> thank you. Well, there you have it. That's uh, uh, Ndabo Zulu talking to us, of course, about his uh, music journey. So when are you completing your master's? Uh, in two years' time. In two years' time. Uh, so you only started this year. Yeah, yeah. All, right, only all, right. all the best with your studies. Yeah, thanks a lot. Let's take a break here on Morning Live. It's uh, 11 minutes before we say goodbye here on the show. Stay tuned.